Christmas Day. Um, I wasn't sure that I was going to get a video up today. It is Christmas Eve right now, so uh, I guess I'll be editing some videos tonight. But I really did want to say Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, whatever holiday you're celebrating. If you celebrate one, I hope that you are enjoying the season, you are healthy, or as healthy as can be, and you and your friends are doing well. So, I wanted to do a little video today, actually sort of um, a request-ish. During the live stream a few nights ago, somebody had asked if I had done any sort of like diagnosis story update, because the last one I did was really long ago. So I thought we would talk about that tonight. And this is not a negative story. This is a positive story. I will tell you time and time again that I'm very thankful um, for my disease. Yes, it sucks. But it has brought a lot of positive things to my life. So I don't think that I would be the person that I am today without it. And that's why this is a good story to tell. A few things before we get into that. I want to thank all the people that keep reaching out to me still. I mean, it's been uh, like a week and a half since surgery. And I'm getting messages on Facebook. I'm getting text messages from people that are just making sure that I'm still doing okay and still recovering okay. Um, there are a few people in particular like the Fry Life. Mary has been reaching out to me so much and I'm so appreciative um, because it just brings a little bit of light to the day, um, particularly when I'm dealing with ongoing pain that I'm not really sure how to manage at this point. Um, and then there's another person who has reached out to me a lot and her name is Becky Bauman and she actually is starting a YouTube channel today. She has a little teaser up and I don't know if her video is going up yet, but I wanted to shout her out. Her channel is Becky Bauman um, and she is Becky Talks Butt Stuff on Instagram. So I love that name. So please check her out. I also want to thank all the people that have gone on my Teespring store and bought a shirt or use the Amazon links that I put in my description because um, it does help me out financially, especially with the surgery that I had and no longer working at the hospital because of it. So thank you so much. And the last thing that I'll say before we talk about the subject that we're meaning to talk about is I thought it would be kind of cool to do a schedule with my videos that I've been uploading. I would really like to do videos Monday, Wednesday, Friday and YouTube launched this thing that's called Premieres so it allows you to kind of watch your video along with everybody else watching but also chat with them live. So I've been trying to do that more often with my videos, get on when it um, goes live and talk to people. So my hope is that Mondays and Fridays when I upload my video, hoping for a 1 p.m. upload, um, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, that I can dedicate that time to chat with everybody and get to know you all because I recognize a lot of names on there. And on Wednesdays, I do have a very busy work schedule at home. I usually have back-to-back -back meetings from like noon till 7, so I can't really be live then um, to chat with you, but the video can upload at 1 p.m. like normal. So let me know if you like that idea, and okay, let's get into this video. So a lot of my YouTube channel is talking about the results of my disease, like what happened to me because of it. So ostomy surgery, resection surgery, and now this proctocolectomy. But it's been a long time since I've gone all the way back to when everything started with Crohn's and when my symptoms started and how I got diagnosed. I was one of those people who started to have Crohn's symptoms very young. I was about seven or eight years old when it started to rear its ugly head and the first thing that I ever remember was severe constipation which now I think might have been my stricture starting um, and that stricture was in my rectum. So I remember being about eight years old and crying in the bathroom for hours because I didn't want to go to the bathroom. It was very very painful and there would be a little bit of blood. And then my weight started to kind of plateau. I just sort of stopped growing. Um, if I look back at pictures of myself when I was playing soccer in first grade, I was like medium height. You know, there were girls that were shorter than me. There were girls that were taller than me. I was about average, which is really weird to see now because I am very petite, like very tiny, five foot, 
90 pounds. Most people tower over me. So it's a little bit weird to see that. Of course, my parents knew something was up and my dad took me to the pediatrician multiple times and they kind of just said, well, you know, feed her more milk, get her um, getting more calories, more calcium, and she should start to grow. Of course, that didn't really work. And my mom, which I know I don't talk about a lot, she unfortunately passed away when I was 13, but she was there for the earlier years of my life, and she was a nurse as well. She unofficially diagnosed me with what she called dumping syndrome. Now that I worked in the GI field, I know that dumping syndrome is something completely different from Crohn's disease, but Crohn's is what she was talking about because she was referring referring to it as like going to the bathroom all the time. But she was kind of the one that knew something was up and pushed me to see a specialist. So finally when I was about 11 years old, I went on for about four years of just kind of not knowing what was happening and, and suddenly becoming sick. Um, I went to the pediatrician and it was a new guy and he said, I think I know what you have. I think you have Crohn's disease but we need to get testing done and we need to send you to a specialist. My dad had heard of Crohn's disease because when he was a kid, there was a kid that had it and wound up having to leave school for months to have a colectomy. And it was really bad. So that was his only experience with the disease. So he was gutted. He was just like, very upset. So I went to a GI specialist and I will say now that she was pretty horrible. She was really terrible actually. Um, but she did give me the diagnosis of Crohn's disease after sending me for a colonoscopy and an endoscopy where they put the camera down your mouth all the way through your esophagus. And obviously the colonoscopy is the opposite, going the other way. But we had that done and I had ulcerations from my esophagus all the way through my stomach my small intestine and my colon so right away there was something very wrong and we had to treat it right away so I was put on steroids everybody is usually put on steroids to start and I'm very fortunate that I was only on them for about six months I easily tapered off of prednisone um, they switched me to Entacort which I think is budesonide if I'm remembering correctly I've been out of the hospital for three or four months now <laughs> Uh, I think it's budesonide. That was actually a much weaker steroid, but the one that I really struggled to come off of. My symptoms would pop back up the minute that we would taper. So that took a lot longer to taper. Um, but even so, collectively, I was only on steroids for about six months. And the maintenance drug that they put me on was something called mercaptopurine. And from my experience of working on the GI floor at a children's hospital, this is not often used, at least not inpatient. We tend to see, obviously, the sicker kids because they're being hospitalized and we're doing things like Remicade or Humira right off the bat because we don't want to mess around. I really wish that was the course that my doctor had taken. Um, she didn't monitor too closely and Mercaptopurine really didn't work for me. But she had kept me on it for nine years and I continued to stricture and scar and ultimately end up where I am now. But it's in the past, what's done is done, and I can't change it, so we're gonna just brush over that. Mercaptopurine is a really, really tough drug on your body. It's chemotherapy, essentially. Um, a lot of people will lose their hair, and a lot of people have GI upset, very similar to traditional like chemotherapy that you hear about because of the cells that it attacks. I luckily never lost any hair. I've not had that issue, but I did have a lot of trouble on that drug. We actually had to wean me up on it um, because I got so sick to my stomach, and that's pretty common, but it was, um, I mean, I was throwing up nonstop. It was really rough. So we wound up weaning me up and I was able to tolerate it after a couple weeks. Unfortunately, it really didn't help a whole lot um, because shortly after, I would say probably two years after my diagnosis, I still was not growing. Um, nothing was happening and I was, I think, 13 at this point. I had to start tube feeding and that was really, really tough because I knew something was wrong. I knew that I couldn't eat for a physical reason, 
No one around me believed it though. I've spoken about this before, but my pediatric GI thought that I had anorexia nervosa. Um, she thought that I didn't want to gain weight or I had a skewed view of myself and I I felt like screaming to the world like, yes, I know I'm skinny. <laughs> I want to gain weight, but I can't. And it got to the point where I would either eat so much that I would just throw it all up because I'd eaten too much, um, which eating too much to me was like eating half a cup of mashed potatoes. <laughs> but I would eat and eat to try and prove that I was trying and then I would throw it up. And then I realized that that wasn't working, so I would hide food from my dad. And I would hide it under couches or cushions or anywhere. And then I would go back later and try and throw away the evidence. But one night I had forgotten and he had seen it and he got mad. Luckily, 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 a very short time later, I started having um, basically a blockage that we didn't know was a blockage. I was having a lot of pain. So I wound up in the ER throwing up, having this like peristalsis -y contraction pain in my abdomen and they realized that I did have a blockage and my surgeon, Dr. Matei at CHOP, who is an angel, love him to death, um, he was able to find a stricture in my rectum and dilate it. And that night I went to the bathroom for the first time in months and ate like never before. So that was kind of the discovery of this stricture that to this day obviously has caused problems because I just had surgery to remove all of it. That's kind of the story of my diagnosis. It was it was a long time um, and it was a really long time to figure out that I had stricturing disease because I hadn't been monitored the way that I should have been. Um, they missed out that that strictures were forming that are permanent and the scar tissue is permanent so surgery would be the only option for me I feel so lucky that during this time of being diagnosed you know I had a lot of physical changes because my face grew and people were wondering all my friends were wondering and I just kinda said you know this is what's up I have Crohn's disease I don't even know what that means but I have it and I'm on these medicines that are making me big and making me sick and I don't feel good and my friends really didn't care they just were like okay it is how it is and I'm so lucky one of my friends that I had been friends with since my diagnosis um, we I think we became friends the year that I was diagnosed with Crohn's she lives in Texas now but her family still lives on the East Coast so she was visiting for the holidays and she drove over an hour to see me uh, after surgery so I am so thankful for those people that I had and still have today but yes that is the story of my diagnosis it was a little weird but isn't everybody's story a little weird when it comes to Crohn's? <laughs> in the comments below, let me know how you were diagnosed. Let me know if it was like a little bit different, a little bit weird, because I've heard so many stories and it seems like there is not one that is the same as another. Um, it seems like it's so difficult to get diagnosed with this disease because the doctors don't want to test for it. You know, it's always the assumption that there's a GI bug going on or it's kind of in your head and you need to just work through it. It's anxiety, something like that. And then once they get to, you know, the insides and they see what's going on or they get to the micro level and they see what's going on, you realize, hmm, not normal. So let me know if you have an interesting story below and I hope you all are having a great Christmas! Woo! We are having Zach's family over, so I am probably sitting in that chair right right there with that blanket um, right now as you're watching this. My dog is snoring. So cute. Okay, I'm gonna let them sleep. So, Merry Christmas everybody, and I'll see you in the next. Bye!